But you just, you, you just keep loving and you go low and slow. But I, I want to just share a few stories here on these Beatitudes. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall... Thank you so much. Oh, I think I can see it. I know it so well, I don't really have to see it. If it's, if I, yeah, if I didn't know it so well, I'd have to use my glasses, but I can see it. I can, I mean, I know it. Shakaraba. <laughs> you read a big book on it, you should at least know what it said, right? <laughs> Blessed are the merciful. Are you? For they shall receive mercy. What does mercy look like to you? You're not used to speakers pausing, are you? What does mercy look like for you? Love? Forgiveness? Undeserved? Grace? Compassion. When you don't repay somebody with what they deserve. Yes. My mercy. It's when so, somebody deserves one thing and they get mercy instead. Jesus um, is a perfect example of a merciful one. A merciful God. We don't deserve heaven. We don't deserve adoption. We don't deserve it. Adoption, there's something, I know, Jason, I got to hear it even. I know the message well. I've been with you many times hearing it, but I, I was in my office in meetings, but I still could hear, which was awesome. So I know the decree came. I love that. A natural-born child, whether the child is planned or not planned, a natural-born child is the child of the mother and father, right? Naturally. It's their blood. It's their DNA. A child that is adopted is literally picked, chosen, wanted. It's a powerful thing. The spirit of adoption is so powerful. An adopted child is very, 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 very loved. It's not like a second choice. It's not like, well, I wish I had my own, but I'm going to take you anyway. I, 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 there's something about a spirit of adoption that says, I so want you, I so choose you, I so pick you, that you, you're just, you just belong to me in every way I want you, in every way I want you. But there's also something about mercy on it. Like, it did, the child wasn't just born to you. It didn't just happen. You picked that. Mercy works like that too. Mercy is, you deserve this, but I'm giving you this. Do you understand? So, if the Lord says, if Jesus says, and this is a picture of Jesus, you merciful ones, if you're merciful, you will receive mercy. Every day, I want to look at life like that. What does it look like to be merciful? What does it look like to be kind? What does it look like to be compassionate? All the answers you had. What does it look like to be gracious? What does it look like to be merciful? Like when God adopted us, that was merciful. When he forgave our sin, that was merciful. When he took our, our sin upon himself, that's the greatest mercy he could have ever given us, right? Merciful, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. So what does it look like for someone to carry mercy. I, I think of uh, Pai Supreza. I'm going to read. I'm going to read. 
several of these Beatitudes today, but the, the story that hits me of mercy is Pai Supreza, who's coming to speak to you. Um, a few years ago, when we were in the middle of the nation, one of our friends, we were staying in his house, in his hut. His name, his name was Pastor Sutoli. And we were staying in his hut with his kids and his wife. And, a, uh, and, and then we came back to the north here. We were in the center of the nation. We were doing um, our, our meetings. And we were ministering there. And many were coming to Jesus. Many, many people of other faiths. And, and we, we got back here and we got a call from Paisprasa. And he said, my, my cousin brother has just been martyred. Now we're singing that song, right? But this is my friend. This isn't, this is my friend. I just stayed in his house. He's been martyred. And the way he was martyred was not like uh, uh, just a bullet in his head. He was tied up to a chair in front of his wife and four children. And they said, you will never, ever speak about Jesus anymore in this village. And they chopped off his tongue with a machete. They said, you will never, you will never go anywhere and, and, and walk to any of our village and tell them about Jesus and the love of Jesus. And they cut off his feet. Wow. Cut off his feet. They said, you will never take food to anybody and tell them about the love of Jesus. And they kept mentioning love. And they cut off his hands. Both of his hands, he cut them off. And they kept going with phrases in front of his wife and his children. They did this. And then they cut off his lips and they killed him. And he didn't, we didn't even think about trying to raise him from the dead. They cut off his lips. They cut off his tongue. I've told some of this story before. They cut off his hands, his feet, and they cut off his head. His wife was completely traumatized. The kids were completely traumatized. I remember, I remember just, just the grief and the pain of that. But I remember more than the grief and the pain of that, I remember the response of one of my greatest heroes, Supreza. He just said, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to drive right in there. And we had just been able, merciful God, if you ever wonder what's a practical thing to do, get vehicles for people. That's a really good thing to do. Mercifully, he just, we just had a miracle and he had a new Land Rover, a vehicle that actually worked. That's exciting. Because you need to get places to do things, you know. So he had this Land Rover, and he and we mercifully we had a sound system, and he put this huge sound system in the Land Rover, drove all the way to Safala Province. He drove for three days, and he he got the guy out of prison. One of the guys they caught that martyred his cousin brother got him out of prison. And said, you can cut off our tongue. And got the entire village, a village of about 3,000 people. He set up the sound system, got the guy out of jail, said, we forgive everybody. We love everybody. Just let him come to my meeting. Has this meeting with the murderer standing right there in his custody and talks about love. He says, you can cut off all our tongues. You can cut off our tongues. Hundreds more will come. Hundreds more will come and tell you we love you. And Jesus loves you. You can cut off our feet. Hundreds more will run and tell you Jesus loves you. You can cut off our hands. Hundreds more will run. Tell you Jesus loves you. You can cut off our heads. Hundreds more will run and tell you Jesus loves you. You see, love has to look like something. And mercy has to look like something. And in, in Supreza had every right to drive and, and make sure that man that murdered his cousin brother and the rest of them were caught and persecuted. 
And instead, he, he does the total opposite. He lets the murderer martyr his own cousin brother out of jail and loves him to salvation. What do you do with that kind of love? What happened was 3,000 plus people bowed their knee in the dirt that day and said, we're going to follow Jesus. That's what mercy does. Mercy triumphs over justice. Mercy triumphs over justice. Mercy triumphs over justice. You look at ISIS. You look at hell in the world. You look at the pain. Do you think bombing people is going to bring a, a, a transition of the heart? It won't. Love, radical love. Seeing people's eyes through that veil. If that's all you can see, then look at their eyes. I do that every time. If they look down, I go lower and I look up and, Hello, how are you doing? People want to be seen. They want to be known. They want to be loved. Love has to look like something. Mercy has to look like something. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Every day I ask God to let me carry mercy. I don't want judgment myself. I don't want it. I know myself. I'm not perfect. I want mercy. I want to receive mercy. I need the mercy of God every day just to make it through the rest of the day. I need mercy. Mercy triumphs over justice. Blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. One day, I was in, um, I, I found this little kid. A rascal of a kid. He was a mixed race kid. So his um, father, who just never met him, probably had a one night thing with the mom, was a white guy. So he was half white, half black. So because that was a disgrace in the village, they threw him out on the garbage dump. <coughs> he, was, um, he was really living like an animal, you know? He bit. He, he bit. He fought. He, he was naked in the garbage. That shouldn't happen. That's wrong. He was tortured by people. They called him a, like a mulungu, like a white devil mix. It was horrible. And he was, when I found him, he'd been tortured a long time. So he had a hard life. He still has a hard life. He's getting better. It's taken a long time. I brought him home. I put him in my truck. I said, I want you to live with me. I think you're beautiful. I think you're very beautiful. I think you're really beautiful and you're very precious to God he, he growled a lot you know he had a lot of demons he growled and he bit and he kicked and we just loved him until the demons couldn't handle it <coughs> and one day I was up uh, I was preaching in, in my church in Zimpetu and we were in a tent and there he was. Arsenio is his name. He was on his face and he was screaming. He was just screaming. And I thought, wow, he's having a hard day. 
by the time I, I, I decided to go ask him, how are you doing? He was just starting, he was weeping and screaming and then weeping and weeping and weeping and weeping and sobbing. And I went down and I just said, Arsenio, what's going on? He said, I just saw Jesus. I saw Jesus. And, and here is the combo deal. That boy had every right to carry hatred for the rest of his life in the natural. His mom threw him out in the garbage. His father, he never knew. He was tortured. He was starved almost to death. And instead, not only did he receive mercy, but he gave mercy and, and we walked him through forgiveness for his mother and his father who he didn't know. And then, and then he's on his face, just in this most purity of heart, just purity of heart. Holy Spirit crashes in on him, and he sees God. He literally sees God. He sees Jesus. And I say, what did he say? He said, everybody that comes to him, he will forgive. And he, and he said, and everybody in Mozambique that will bow their knee to Jesus, he will forgive. And he is literally speaking out of his own heart, out of the purity. When he saw the face of God, the face of Jesus, he's able to understand theology deeper than 10 years of 15 years of systematic theology. One kid who'd been tortured and 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 had a, the life, the hell life, in one moment sees Jesus and everything changes. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. You must find a way to see Jesus in the poor. You must find a way to see Jesus in the broken. You must find a way to see Jesus in the word. You must find a way to see Jesus in each other. But your heart has to be pure. So ask God to purify your heart. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, walked in total purity. And walked in complete and utter 100% communion with God the Father. Pure. In heart, do you want to see God? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I feel like it comes straight after the mercy phrase for a reason. It has to come straight after the mercy phrase for a reason. Because mercy triumphs over just judgment. And unless you're merciful, you can't see God. And you have to be merciful with yourself. Because if you judge yourself, and you judge yourself, and you judge yourself, you'll never be able to see God. Because you'll always be condemning yourself when God says, I love you. I call you son. I call you daughter. I call you beautiful. And my sweet Arsenio had to forgive himself. Two. And he he went through so many phases, but now he's just um, been blessed with a little girl. And the great pleasure and privilege of my life is her name is she's named after me, Ida. Idinha, little Ida. And he said, he said to God, if I ever have a little girl, I want to name her Ida. Is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it for one. It's worth it for one. Just give your life away. Just give you, just throw yourself at the feet of Jesus. You want to do that? Yeah. Just throw yourself at the feet of Jesus. Just give him everything. Say, this is all I've got. This little life. Just take it. Just take it. Greatest treasure 
is to be in his presence. When you lose your life, you find it. You lose your life, you find it. You lose your life, you find it. You connect with God. What can be better than connecting with God? When you connect with God and then you connect with the purposes of God on the planet, you are the happiest people on the planet. Nobody can come up with joy like that. I know many, many billionaires. There's no way they have that kind of joy unless they're totally abandoned to Jesus. I'm telling you, money doesn't do it. Drugs don't do it. Alcohol doesn't do it. Sex doesn't do it. Nothing that people think will do it doesn't. Like, if you understand who he is, your life is completely full of radical joy. And if someone tries to sell you a lie, it is a lie. God is so full of power and love and glory. When you connect with him, your life and his life start to become one. You become one, one, one with him, one with his purposes, one with his heart, one with his desire. And joy unspeakable and full of glory is yours. I'm not telling you a lie. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. The greatest thing you could ever do with this little life that you have with for 75, 85, 95 years, the, the, this little life is just, bam, lay it down at the feet of Jesus and do it every day for the rest of your life. What would you do if you weren't afraid? What would you do if you had no fear? Come on. What would you do if you had no fear? What would your life look like? Where would you go? What would you do? <laughs> I know. I'm doing it. <laughs> Come on. What would you do if you had no fear? Where would you go? Just wherever he says. If it's Newport Beach. Yes, Lord. I don't care. I literally don't care. I literally don't care. I don't even care if somebody understands or not. I'll go to the slum. I'll go to the palace. I'll go to the bush. I'll go to the five star. I'll go to the billion star. I'll go to the seven star. I don't care. What would you do if you had no fear? No fear of man. <laughs> I don't need people to understand me. I need to hear God. I need to obey my daddy. I need to get it right with him. And then that's all that matters. If I'm getting it right with him and my life looks like love manifested, that's what matters to me. And it looks merciful and it looks pure. I want to see him. I want to know him. I want to radiate his love. And I want to be able to tell you with 100% honesty that he's worth it all. And I can. I can. So I will. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Peacemakers. Peacemakers. I told you one time, uh, generally I, I don't... Uh, I'm trying to think of a story right now, but I'm only coming up with one. I don't usually say one that involves my my kind of something happening with me, but this one was when they were when there was this huge riot here and I told you a little bit about it, but it was a huge riot and this Australian had taken uh, some kind of anti-malarial that made her go crazy and she's running naked down the street and it was it was a challenge and uh, she's like she, it wasn't her fault you know something it, what, what's that pill called larium don't take it don't take it just say no <laughs> just say no so she took larium and she was like running down ripping her clothes off and she didn't know what she was doing and she locked the arma say she locked the storeroom and so I had all these it was the first thing we ever did here and there were tents all over the place and I showed you pictures of that day remember remember that yeah. and um, she's like clothes 
flying and Armasay locked and and uh, I, I didn't know what to do. And they said, there's a big riot, go fix it. And uh, all I knew was the Lord said, uh, he always tells me, go low, go slow, go low, go slow, right? I, I get teased about it. You'll hear it so much. Go low, go slow. What does love look like? Stop for the one. I mean, you're going to understand by the time you leave these things that are deep inside of us. So, so I'm like, okay, go low, go slow. Why the heck did they call me? I'm a five foot three white woman. And, and I'm not like, I'm not like really feeling led to jump into a riot of a bunch of people who are super angry and want to throw rocks and sticks. I, I, I'm not really feeling the joy inside of me, you know? And I'm thinking, why didn't they call the pastors? And they called me and I'm like, oh, Jesus, I don't want to, I don't want to. And I'm trying to think of anybody else they can call. And they're like, nope, nope, it has to be you. You're going to have to go. I don't want to do. But I went. And all I know is when all those angry men were super furious and they had separated, right? So the men were up here, right there where the all those offices are. And their women and children were down there at the bottom where the trucks are. But back then we didn't have anything. So they were up here. It was all kind of bush with some tents. It was outreach, right? So there are tents here, men, uh, hundreds of them. I don't know, three, four hundred. I can't remember. I think there were about four hundred. Anyway, it was a lot of them. Sticks, rocks. I walked into the middle and I just, God just let me feel their pain. And I just, I just pleaded forgiveness. I just said, please forgive us. Please, please forgive us. We are so sorry. And they just immediately dropped their sticks and rocks and said, we forgive you, Mama. Just like that. And God, that day, God multiplied spaghetti for us. No joke. Documented. Even if you're a scientist, you could have proved it. He made spaghetti for us. One pan fed every man, woman, and child, and all the visitors. Everybody. One, one pan. Shakarapa. I believe it was because they forgave that God just did that miracle. Blessed are the peacemakers. God's called you to make peace on the earth. They will be called the sons of God. You are a son. You are a daughter. You're called to be a peacemaker.